and freeze, as is the tradition. Good evening, fellow fattercasters. I can finally say that now because my shirt arrived today. No, yesterday, I beg your pardon. Um, you know, <laughs> better late than never. And uh, on the second attempt, the first one that they sent me was um, a medium. Do you, do you think that this frame will ever fit into anything with the word medium-sized written on it? Uh, I severely doubt it. Let me just get this lighting fixed. Um, it either goes too bright or too dark. Uh, that'll do about there, I think. Um, so, yes, indeed. First things first, it's Friday. It's beer o'clock. Cheers, everyone. Oh, dear me, that tastes good. In case anyone's interested, and somebody usually is, uh, Heineken tonight, um, because they still had the same deal on in uh, in the supermarket, three slabs um, for twenty three pound, and um, unusually it wasn't sold out. So I grabbed some. Uh, let's see who is in the chat and who was teacher's pet first in uh, this particular Friday. I see it's Johnny Random. A while since you've made it through the doors first, mate. Um, and then hot on the heels. Terry Day, Mark Kernow, and Rent to Kill. Peter Collins is there. So his theme tunes. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Chip Young, Sean House, Dave Fiendish is in. So it's PFY Guitars, Paul Trainer BSC, and there's Relaxing Meditation as well. Malcolm Thompson is there. So it's Tom Clark, Steve Entwistle, Rob Bald, um, and John Mack and Dr. Gomez. One is in, and uh, then we've got John Ross and Stuart Young, Peter Nicholson. Uh, did I say that already? And... Uh, uh, no, we didn't. I almost forgot this Friday came round quick. They always seem to. Monday seems to be, you know, you stood at the bottom of the hill and you've got to push the boulder up it all again, uh, all over again. And then before you know it, um, it's Wednesday. That's the, and that's bin day uh, for us. And uh, then, you know, after Wednesday, it's Thursday or Friday Eve, as we call it in this house. Um and then we got Stuart Young in there, and Grandpa Joe, as always, let's put you up on the screen, mate. A um, little tip for you, if you want your um, your chat to go up on the screen, write something long, because I find it easier to read long messages when they're in slightly bigger print on screen. Uh, greetings, John and all. Uh, I may start a beer trivia question. Which country drinks the most beer per capita? Please guess, this may be easy for many of you. Wishing everyone a great weekend. Well, I would hazard a guess. I would, you know, I would think that um, I'd be very disappointed if it isn't the UK. Let's put it that way. Um, then we've got uh, Amadeus and um, guitar bass dude uh, Ben Allmark, Randy Upchurch, Cylon Hybrid, and there's Ian Clark. Who else we got? We got Craig Stearman uh, in as well, and Frank Bolam and Savvy sixty four is in. So is Ian Rouse, Stephen Hedger, and. Um, Who's but Stephen Hedger building a really fierce curry in order of this evening's festivities? Funny enough, that's what we're having this evening, and curry will be um, something we're talking about later on in the stream. And uh, who else we've got? Um, we've got uh, Star Lancer, Mickey Walnuts, and uh, John Channing is there. So is Jimmy James, and uh, who else? We've got David Evans, and uh, Michael Bellivo is in. Carl Tom is there, uh, local lad to me. And uh, there's Robert Forsyth, Michael Purcell. Uh, Russell Gibson is uh, through the door next. And who else we've got? Martin Bix. And anyone else, anyone else? Let's have a quick wee look, uh, scrolling down. There's the Gain Din, and uh, we've got Chris Ottawell, and... Um, who else have we got? Uh, Calby and the Rocco Cat. How could I forget? And uh, there's Triple Distilled. And uh, uh, let's have a look. Scroll down uh, till I get to some new names. Colin Falcon, another local lad. Uh, just around the corner from me, pretty much. Uh, there's Maria Davis. And uh, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. We've got Thomas Mulvaney in there as well. And James Hunt. Uh, as always, from Sonny Dagenham. He always seems to say from Sonny Dagenham, doesn't he? I, I hope it's uh, might, might be worth moving there if it's always that nice down in Dagenham. 
Uh, never been there. Uh, somebody tell me if it's a nice place to be. Uh, there's Mississippi Blues and Cal Texper. And we got Bill Mumbo. And, um, oh, uh, I believe we've uh, got the answer to the riddle earlier. Uh, Czech Republic, 184 litres per capita per year. Well, that's something to aim for, isn't it? Um, I'll make a start on that tonight, shall I? And... Um, who else have we got? Steve Cassidy Guitar, who is uh, just uh, heading out for a gig shortly. Well, have a good mate, break a leg, and um, I imagine you've got um, an upload going live at uh, just straight after this live stream, so don't forget to head over to Steve's channel and check that out. I was watching your live stream earlier, mate, but um, the dog had a squeaky ball and was... Um, Interrupting proceedings, shall we say, so apologies if I missed any of that. There's Brad Dowell in there. And who else have we got? We have got uh, Jonah Cornish and Jed Ellis. Is it Jed or is it Ged? One of them is going to be right. I apologize for the one I got wrong. Then we've got Zen234. And uh, who else? Anyone else? Jeff Benner and Peter S. And anyone else? We've got Mott the Hoople 2010. Iva is in. Anyone else? Uh, there's Timbo. Uh, same day for the bins with Timbo. <laughs> nice one. I don't know. It's um, It always seems, everybody I speak to, seems, it always seems to be um, Wednesday that uh, the bin men turn up. There's Jay Ao Young. And we've got uh, lots of guesses on the, uh, the, the, the beeriest nation. We already know it's the Czech Republic. Uh, there's uh, anyone else, anyone else? Uh, the Gissy 77 is in. So is Andreas Lundell and Graham Campbell. And we're coming to the end of the list now. Mr. Chris 5254. Uh, there's Ian Geddes and Paul Trainer. You, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you very much. Um, I promise to spend it all on beer. And then I think that is pretty much everyone. 158 souls on board at current count, according to the stats that I've got on the screen. Thank you, each and every one of you, for turning up and watching. Uh, oh, there's Dr. Gomez 1, uh, just uh, sneaking there. Apologies if I missed you uh, earlier, mate. Yeah, 157. <laughs> Somebody's left. Yes, lock the doors. Everybody has to stay on board. Anyway, um uh, yes, what do I do usually this time? Oh, yeah, tell you what's coming up on the channel this week, don't I? Right, so let's get that out of the way. Um, <clears throat> Sunday's video um, is a guitar that you've seen me review once before, actually, uh, or a make and model of a guitar that you've seen me review once before, and this is a second bite of the cherry, not because um, I was um, undecided about my conclusions from the first review, it's just that I got my chance to get my paws, my grubby little paws, on uh, another example of this breed. Uh, we're looking at, on Sunday, the Epiphone 59 Les Paul that you saw me unboxing a few weeks ago on this very live stream. Um, if you were watching back then, that is. Um, I got the chance to, to kind of get another one, and basically it was part of a, a trade. Remember the, the PRS that I used to have? And since the hand injury, it wasn't as comfortable anymore. I tried selling it. It was going nowhere. So I um, I managed to do a trade, uh, the PRS, for this Epiphone 59. Not one of the new ones. Not one of the ones with the kind of the, the, the inspired by Gibson custom shop. Just one of the um, inspired by Gibson Epiphone 59 outfit things that were, uh, Les Paul outfit things that were around, gosh, it's about three years ago now. Must be at least that long. Um, so you're going to see me uh, having a little bit of a look at that for a second time on Sunday. Then on Monday, uh, something I don't tend to do too much of on the channel. Um, it's it, it's a solo, uh, as, as Monday videos always are, solo analysis. But it's got a definite, definite country theme to it. Um, from an album that I'm really enjoying that the, the the, the the kind of hell out of at the moment um it's um the, the album is the whippoorwill by blackberry smoke it's it's just an album that i cannot stop listening to um i really really love that album and there's a track on there which has a very definite country kind of feel but country in the same sort of way that the stones would occasionally do a country song things like um thinking of songs like dead flowers 
uh, you know, for Sticky Fingers album. It's got that kind of vibe to it, and I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. Um, the song is called Pretty Little Lie, and it's it's just a great, great song, great album. If you're not familiar with Blackberry Smoke's album, um, The Whipper Will. Uh, Steve Cassidy, I have done a Shania Twain solo once before. It's um, the solo from Man, I Feel Like a Woman, played, I believe, by... Uh, the wonderful Mr. Dan Huff. I did that years ago. Maybe I should do some more of that because I think we all kind of succumbed to that album back in, the, was it 97, 98, that Shania Twain album. And um, i got to tell you, I don't care if it's uncool. I still listen to it uh, from time to time now. Uh, so that's Monday's solo then. Pretty Little Light by uh, Blackberry Smoke. Uh, then on Tuesday, a reworking, another chance to enjoy, as they say in the TV industry, um, you know, um, basically a, a retread of a video that I did all oh, before the whole kind of COVID lockdown kind of thing uh, kicked off. Um, I did a video back then about my uh, the, the guitars I would buy if I won the lottery, and I think, well, it's been a long enough period, um, so I'm going to have another another go at that the thing is though back then i did the kind of okay so i want there's got to there's got to be a strat so i want the best possible strat there's got to be a telly so i'll get the best possible telly and so on and so on you know basically choosing the most expensive version of every kind of conceivable well-known type of electric guitar well i'm not doing that this time I'm doing the ones that I would literally, if I had that big kind of um, suitcase full of uh, £50 notes, uh, which is how I imagine the pay a lot rewind. They probably don't, but it'd be nice if they did. Um, if I had that big pile of cash, then these are the ones I would actually go out and buy because they're the ones that I want, not the ones that um, you, know, you feel you ought to have. Um, and uh, so that's Tuesday's video. Then Wednesday is a viewer's question, uh, as always. And um, the, this is one that came in a few weeks ago. And I do apologize. I can't remember who um, who uh, asked me about this, but someone did. And if it's you, well, it's your turn this week, mate. Um, how to play your guitar through a PC. What equipment do you need? How do you connect it all up? What software do you need? How do you make it all work? Um, so that's what we're, oh, see, we've got the lamb in, um, uh, <laughs> what are you saying there, mate? <laughs> Was just eyeing up a new Harley Benton or Jet guitar and the washing machine is packed in such is life, I guess. Cheers. Yeah, well, that kind of stuff happens, doesn't it? Um, so anyway, Wednesday's, uh, video is all about how you go about connecting your guitar up to a PC and playing it through, basically using your PC as an amp sim or whatever. That's what we're looking at on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, the video that, uh, some of you have been, um, clamoring for, you know, I've been inundated with a request, uh, to do this video, um, I always talk on on the Friday live streams about, you know, uh, I've got a curry waiting for me downstairs. Well, on Thursday, you're going to see the curry recipe. Uh, you're going to see the curry being created from uh, a stack of ingredients on the kitchen counter through to the finished product, all batched up and ready to go into the freezer. So that is uh, what we're doing on Thursday. And what do we do on, after Thursday? Oh, let me think. Oh, yeah, it's this, isn't it? Cheers, everyone. Right, let's have, just have a little bit of a chat while I pour myself beer number two. I've noticed in the past few live streams, I seem to get through the first beer, um, you know, by about where are we now, quarter past. And, um, you know, then the second one seems to linger until, you know, kind of nearly the end of the stream. And then I've got to chug a third one because I can't do, I can't only do two beers on an hour's live stream. That's letting the side down, isn't it? Um... You know, and then I've got to chug a third one in the last few minutes of the of the stream, which I did last week. And uh, oh, excuse me, not bad, not bad, not quite worthy of the flake, uh, but not bad. Um, Triple is still the same. Will we see you chopping the onions, grating the uh, ginger and garlic, etc.? You have to wait till Thursday, mate. I do. Um, spoiler alert. I do use some pre-prepared ingredients um, because, uh, well, I once saw um, a cookery uh, show on TV where the legendary Marco Pierre White was using um, Leon Perrin's 
and Bisto gravy granules in one of his Michelin starred recipes. So if it's good enough for him, hey, I'm, I'm going to take that as permission. Um, who else have we got? Uh, what else have we got to talk about? Um, so it's Ruby Tuesday as opposed to Ru Ruby Thursday as opposed to Ruby Tuesday. Yes. Um, it's just translation for the overseas viewers. Um, that's the particular UK thing of rhyming slang. Curry rhymes with Ruby Murray. So, you know, uh, a curry is often known as a ruby. Uh, there you go. Um, it's If you're from the UK, you, you, you kind of get it. Um, if you're not, it's something that puzzles you. My Canadian missus can never get her head, her head around that sort of thing. But then she starts every now and again talking in this thing, is it called Pig Latin? Which I, she's tried explaining it to me a million times and I just don't get it. Um, Michael Purcell, what are you saying there, mate? Listen to Vintage Trouble, especially the first album. Maybe you could do a solo from that album. They're still around now. Yeah, um, the, um, the I don't know which was the first album. I, I let, I'm, That's going on the list, mate. Watch, I'm writing it down. Um, Vintage Trouble. Trouble. Solo. There we go. Um, great band. Great band. I've got... Um, I can't remember which, whether it's the first or second album that is another one that's in regular rotation on my um, kind of turntable, if I had a turntable on my Spotify. But um, it's the album called One Hopeful Road. And it's just like, if you're not familiar with the band, imagine, um, imagine a cross between Otis Redding, The Black Crows, and... Perhaps a little bit of, um, I guess, the Stones or a band like that thrown in. It's kind of part Southern rock, part rhythm and blues, R&B, soul kind of thing, and just part good old-fashioned foot stomp in rock and roll. Great band. Well worth checking out. Um, Stephen Hedger, what are you saying, mate? Um, John, ha have heard uh, High Road Easy Sessions by Sass Jordan. If you haven't, do yourself a big favour and look it up. It's high energy blues rock at its best. I'm, I'm, in, I'm kind of getting into this sort of thing at the moment of discovering new bands. In fact, I've got a video coming up, a, a Top 5 Tuesday video that will be going out in a few weeks' time because I'm about a month in front with my videos talking about uh, new <laughs> bands. So what were they called again? Um, Sass Jordan. Okay, writing that down now, because the chances of me remembering anything that's been said tonight on the live stream uh, tomorrow morning when, uh, you know, there's a considerable amount of this has, um, you know, kind of uh, passed through me is perhaps a little bit, a little bit chancy. Um, yeah, Bomb Shelter Sessions, is that the first album by Vintage Trouble? Um, yeah, that's not the album I've got. I've got uh, One Hopeful Road. Um Um, Deco dude saying, John, you do look a bit like that Greg from a cooking show. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, what's he? I can't remember what he's called, but he, he styles himself the ingredients expert, doesn't he? He's a greengrocer. He sells cabbages for a living. And somehow he's blagged his way into kind of being, um, you know, the, the, the authoritative, authoritative voice on MasterChef. Um, Uh, Carl Tom saying, how about a Green Onions video, perhaps even the Blues Brothers version solo? Okay. Green Onions. Blues Brothers. There's a film I haven't watched in um, in ages. That's what me and the missus do. Now, every time I get some time off work, like a bank holiday, like Easter or Christmas or... Well, Easter or Christmas, frankly. <laughs> That's the only time I take off. Uh, and my birthday... We'll sit and watch um, classic old movies. Over over Easter, we watched um, the original uh, kind of uh, version of Roadhouse, you know, with Patrick Swayze and the Jeff Healy band. Uh, she'd watched the uh, the remake with Jake Gyllenhaal, and she said it was um, a big old load of pony and trap, to be honest. Um, so I didn't bother watching it. Um, you know, after she'd kind of road tested it, but yeah, we watched the original with Patrick Swayze. That's a great film, that really is. Um, 
what you're saying there, Kevin. Uh, got a result today from the doctor. I'm not overweight, just three foot, <laughs> three foot under height. Happy days. All the best from Bobby and Bracknell. <laughs> Bobby and Bracknell. Nice one, mate. I'm going to remember that one. I'm not overweight. I'm under height. Although at five foot 19, I can't really claim that, maybe. You know, I'd, I'd probably need to be about eight foot tall for my uh, BMI index to, to kind of read about, right? But I, I'll try it. I'll try it. Next, next time I get called into the doctor's, for my um, annual uh, telling off because, you know, I eat the wrong food, I drink too much and all the usual stuff that, you know, you, the the the, um, the doctor tells you off for when you get to a certain age as a gentleman. Um, I'll, I'll try that one. Yes, I'm not overweight. I'm under height. Um, let's have a look, see what's in the chat. And then... Coming up shortly, we're going to take a look at some of your uh, wonderful guitar pictures that you've sent me. Um, uh, uh, Ian Clark saying, have you heard anything from the Chris Barris band? I haven't, but... Chris Barris band. You know what I'm going to be listening to in the morning, don't you? Because we've already had this... Um in a video uh, in the morning when, I was, when when there's a few more of these and um, a big dollop of curry kind of, uh, you know, festering away inside me uh, the morning after, then um, I always put um, the Come Away With Me uh, album by Nora Jones on. It's a great way to kind of ease yourself into a, a rather dusty morning. Um, uh, Tim Boy saying, is there a guitar gallery this week? Yes, there is, mate. And spoiler alert, some of your guitars feature in it, mate. Um, uh, James Hunt is saying, blues, country rock seems to be my go-to. Listen to it at the moment. It's, yeah, it's, I like that because it's, um, it's a genre that I'm, in, like, southern rock, country rock, um, and stuff, because it's just uncomplicated. And... You know, you find yourself listening to it with a smile on your face. I, the complexity of like prog rock and classical and a lot of jazz, which I, I also listen to a lot of. You know, um, you know, I, I have times when I'm when I need that sort of richness and depth to to kind of lose myself in. But at the moment, I'm in a kind of place where I'm I'm just wanting to listen to some. Um, some crunchy guitar riffs and good old boy gang vocals on the chorus, you know. Um, um, Stuart Young saying, I, I am and always will be a big fan of the Georgia Satellites. I keep thinking about doing a, a solo analysis of theirs. Um, like, the number of times I've started to tab out, um, like, bits of Battleship Chains, which was the song that, like, got me into them back in the 80s. Um, and then I think, well, yes, it's it's kind of it's it's a great song, but is is it really kind of worthy of doing a fifteen minute lesson on? You know, because it's it's the sort of thing that um, most people could probably figure out. You know, un, un, unassisted. You know, but anyway, um, we, we shall see. Anyway, let's let's take a look at um, the gallery for this week. Um, some of uh, your uh, wonderful guitar pictures that you've sent me. And uh, I think this is the one here. Yes. Um, here we go. Look at this lovely collection here. Um, these are some of, um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, you know, the, uh, the the chap who did the uh, little... Um, caricature of me that's on the fat casters t-shirts and on the thumbnail from all my videos uh pete he's called and uh these are some of his guitars a lovely looking harley benton there uh one of the 25th anniversary uh ones um kind of regretting not getting one of those now but i just i don't know i just wasn't in the in the mood for them at the time and uh, now that it's too late but you know i, I always thought it was a bit weird that they did a, a 25th anniversary guitar in gold uh, or fire you can call it fire mist if you want but it's still a gold colored guitar lovely looking thing and then i believe this is a harley benton fusion t then uh we've got a burns and i always get confused with burns model numbers and, and, and names but um you know it's got that kind of 60s hank marvin retro kind of thing going on there hasn't it um 
if I'm not very much mistaken, a Harley Benton uh, TE52 and an Epiphone 335, and then uh, a trio of Epiphone casinos at the back there. And Pete, uh, I believe it's you, isn't it, mate, that um, you told me, and I can't which one, remember one, which one it is, but there's one of those for sale. So uh, drop it in the chat, mate, whichever one it is. Is it the kind of, uh, how shall we call these? We'll, we'll call it the... Uh, the bookcase one, the middle one, or the um, this one at this end. <laughs> you know which one I mean. Uh, left, right, or middle, we'll call it. And then over here, a guitar that I have um, some experience of myself, because I uh, I had a loan of one of these uh, a couple of years ago. Now, a Godan Fifth Avenue Archtop guitar. Beautiful jazz guitar. Let's see what we got next. Oh, a pair of Ibanez Iceman guitars belonging to Adrian Laws. And uh, Adrian, you sent me a lovely email about these guitars, telling me the story behind uh, both of them. And I wish I could somehow have the email on screen so I could read out what the uh, the information is and um, you know and and the picture on the screen. And but I can't because then you'd be seeing the email and not the pictures. Uh, but a beautiful pair of Ibanez Icemans. I do like that one in that colour. It has to be said. Um, it might surprise you to know that I had an Ibanez Iceman for a brief period in the nineteen eighties. Um, I was going through a period where I was. Um, I was probably changing guitars more often than I was changing my socks. And, um, <laughs> not quite, but not far off. And I, I had a, a, an Ibanez Iceman for a, a little bit of time. Uh, then we've got Cal B's Epo, Ep, Epo, Cal B and the Rocco Cat, uh, Cal B's um, Epiphone Les Paul. Yes, Cal B is a Southpaw, uh, as we found out when he showed us his picture of the, um, of the Harley Benton uh, TE90. Uh, nice looking example there. I like that kind of top on a guitar where you can see there's a little bit of figuring, but it's not in your face and kind of um, overly shouty about it. Uh, nice looking example there, mate. Um, I see the Rocco cat didn't make it into shot this time as he did on uh, a couple of weeks ago when we looked at your Harley Benton. Uh, then there's another one of Calby's guitars, a recent uh, present to himself, uh, a Gretsch with a silvery sparkle finish. Yeah. Um, Yes, well, I'm glad you like it, mate. <laughs> um, you know, that silvery sparkle, it's, you know, you, you know my feelings on guitars which have that sort of uh, footballer's wives, Liberace kind of look to them, but you love it and that's enough. Um, then Chris Snowden, we've seen a few of his guitars before. Um, there's his, uh, on the right there, there's his travel guitar. Um, you know, what is that? I believe that is, if we can, yes, that's a Hofner uh, travel guitar and um you know always reminds me of that guitar from the opening scene of um back to the future you know where marty mcfly's in doc brown's um you know kind of mad uh workshop and then this here isn't this the cutest thing in the world this harley benton sg uh ukulele that's it's like a little puppy isn't it you know, you 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 kind of want to cuddle it and kind of tickle it under its chin and 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 give it kind of uh, you know scraps of sausage. Um, what a what a cute little thing. Uh, then here's a challenge for you. Um, I got three out of four of these right. Um, these all belong to Graham Reeves, and you can see he's covered up the headstock, so you can't see what what's going on. Um, and um, you're probably all guessing what's going on, what, what they are. I mean, I know th this one's obvious. I know what this is because I used to have one myself. Uh, this one, we can tell what it is by the 12th fret inlay. This one here, okay, well, yeah, it's uh, it's probably a Strat. Um, but look at the colour of the fretboard. You know, uh, yeah, what kind of wood is that? That possibly gives it away. And then the thing that almost gave it away for me, if we just kind of zoom in, is this little headstock decal here, this kind of double diamond kind of thing. I thought, yes, I know what brand that is, and I was completely wrong. Uh, what we've got here, of course, is a Squire Bullet Mustang, and this is uh, a Chapman ML something or other. I never know what that what. what that they are, but it's basically the Chapman um, kind of uh, 12th fret in there, there. And this is a player series strat uh, with the, you can tell it's a player series 
not a, a USA model because yes, it has the twin point twin point trim, but it has a Pow Ferro fretboard. And this, I was sure, was some kind of Harley Benton SC something or other. But it's a court, which when you look it up, yes, you can see it's got that court kind of cutaway design there. And court uses a similar kind of headstock. Uh, shape to um, to Harley Bent, not headstock shape, but headstock kind of uh, transfer logo kind of thing to uh, to uh, Harley Benton. Let's see what's next. We've got a pair from Ian Clark here. We've seen a couple of his guitars. I think we've seen both of these guitars before, but not together. This is Ian's um, GS Deluxe from Gordon Smith. Beautiful looking guitar, um, and this is Eastman SB Fifty Nine. Hard to tell which of those I covered the most. Um, I think it's the, the Gordon Smith, um, you know, but um, Ian, like me, isn't particularly a fan of relicking, but uh, he just reconciles that with, he just calls this the old one, <laughs> you know, because it's got some wear on it. Um, then we've got um, some guitars from uh, belonging to Ian Cochran, uh, a brace, well, not brace, a trio of Eastmans at the back there. Uh, this one here looks very much like that Eastman that you sometimes see on Colin Guitarista's channel. Uh, not sure of the model, model designation, but um, it is what it is. Then an SB59 and whatever designation they give to their uh, 335 style guitars. And then a couple of Paulettis down the front there, which I believe aren't they those the guitars that are made with the um, with, with out of recycled wine barrels in Italy? Seriously, custom shop stuff those guitars. I believe Dave Kilminster uh, currently, I believe, touring with Roger Waters has a signature model made by those guys. And then um, he is Chris Snowden. Now this is a picture that um, brings back memories for me. He's got an Epiphone Les Paul there. And I've been in one or two pictures like this myself back in the uh, back in the day. This is your typical northeast of England uh, working men's club uh, publicity shot that you would have done so your agent could put it on the poster. And uh, yes, I, I I've been in that kind of um, you know uh, you know notice the background. It's the same kind of background that you get when um, you get your school photo taken. It's the it's the the, the professional photography studio kind of default. Uh, kind of background and loads of bands and artists used to have these uh, pictures done. Uh, nice memories in that picture for me, Chris. Um, then we've got Peter Collins, 1983 Squire Stratocaster. Um, not keen on that head headstock shape, it has to be said. You know, the... Um, the you know kind of big CBS era headstock, but what a gorgeous looking guitar! And uh, does anyone else in the UK? Am I imagining this? Shout up if you were in the UK in the early 1980s, about 82, 83, maybe 84, and you remember late night on Channel Four, there was that rarest of rare things in on the UK television, um, a television campaign, a television ad campaign for Squire Stratocasters, you know. I think probably the only time electric guitars have been advertised on TV in the UK, and I coveted one of those so badly at the time when I had my, um, what did I have back then? Probably my satellite Les Paul copy. Beautiful guitar, mate. Congratulations. Um, then Peter Collins, uh, Fender Vit Vintera, uh, 60s Jaguar. Yeah, well, there you go. There it is. And... Um, and I, I, I like that. I like the look of the maple on that fretboard there. I mean, my kind of views on the racing pigeons that PRS put on the neck. Um, well, watch this space. You might be surprised about that. Um, there may be something of a, a change of attitude coming along shortly. Say no more. Uh, then we've got uh, Rexomatic, uh, Rex in all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, this is his recent acquisition. This beautiful looking Les Paul textbook example of what a Les Paul should look like. I think uh, absolutely gorgeous. And then we've got Simon Lee's Fender Japan sixty two reissue Strat. Gorgeous looking guitar. Looks like a proper workhorse guitar. That good honest. Good bone guitar, fantastic! I used to have one of those, exactly the same. Uh, only mine was in, um, I think, Sonic Blue. My my example was, and then there's Steve uh, Kine, Kineiro or Kineiro, I but 
apologies for butchering you, your name. Another Southpaw guy, and uh, I believe this is made up of uh, parts he bought on Stratosphere, which I believe they're a company that uh, buy Fender guitars and part them out and make guitars, uh, so you can make guitars out of genuine Fender parts. Lovely looking thing, that. Um, then there's Timbo's Epiphone Custom, and uh, then another Timbo uh, guitar. You like your kind of um, naked ladies on the on the on them, don't you, mate? Or oh, not naked, love it, like scantily clad. Um, that is Harley Benton SC550. Lovely looking guitar, that, in terms of uh, just that white finish. Um, then this is getting into Timbo's um, more kind of, I think we're seeing a glimpse inside your soul here, Timbo. Yes, there's a pair of BC Rich Warlocks. And, um, yeah, he sent me a load of guitars, and I said, uh, I probably, you probably don't spend much time on your clean channel, do you, mate? And uh, he said, I've got a clean channel. Um, Vincent Doyle's 85 Japanese Strat. Oh, lovely-looking guitar. Again, just textbook example of what a Strat uh, should really look like, really. Uh, there you go. So that is the collection for this week. If you want to see your guitars on... Um, on, on, on the live stream here, while we're all kind of drinking beer and looking at pictures of uh, of guitars, then just send them over to me, jrguitartuition at gmail.com. And all I do every week is, like, basically I number the, the guitars that are in the sort of inbox and, you know, then pick about between 15 and 20 uh, to kind of look at at random, and those are the ones that we watch um every you know, that we kind of take a look at every week um so if you want to see your guitars send them to me jrguitartuition at gmail.com let's have another beer oh dear me and get ready to type um flake incidentally Obviously, I was sharing my screen there, so I wasn't able, able to look at the chat. But does anyone else in the UK of a certain vintage remember those TV ads for Squire Strats? You know, I've tried finding them on YouTube. I've tried finding them, you know, any, any mention of them on, on forums and stuff. Um, but uh, um, I just can't find them. Yes, flake it. <laughs> uh, thank you uh, there, Calby. Oh, what are you saying there, Rubbish Guitar Block? Thanks for the super chat. Uh, a little late, just finished tea. Don't know what I've missed, but here's something for the Flake Fund or a larger T-shirt. <laughs> yes, well, I've got the, 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 this, believe it or not. I'm not saying Teespring or Spring or whatever they're called nowadays. Um, let's get this lighting a little bit sorted out. Uh, by the way, let's just uh, bring that up a bit. I'm not saying that they are kind of, you know, a little bit um, inaccurate with their sizing, but this is a triple XL. Yeah. Um, it's, it, you know, I mean, I'm a big lad, but surely I'm not that big. Um, so if you're thinking of uh, ordering one, then bear that in mind. You're probably going to, order, going to need to order something uh, a size uh, bigger than you would normally order. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Michael Bellavo saying, who's got your belly? Um, I think I have, mate, to be honest with you. You only see me from the waist up in here, you know, <laughs> in these videos. I might, I might be wearing stockings and suspenders below the... I'm not, but you wouldn't know if I was. Um, Jeff Crouch is saying, "I'll send a, I'll send John a pick of my SQ series, beautiful guitar. I've seen that, mate. Yes, um, you have a particular penchant for a certain uh, guitar player who is well known for playing a Squire Strat." Um, um, Michael Purcell is saying, "Do you have to get them shipped from the USA?" No, they have. Um, I think either a UK or European um, shipping hub, and they're just printed on demand. You know, that the, the, there isn't a warehouse somewhere full of T-shirts of this design, you know. Um, you know, they're printed on demand, and I make, when you look at the price of them, um, please bear in mind that I, when you look at the, um, you know, the actual price of these guitars, uh, I get about eight quid out of that, um, out of that purchase price that you pay um 
So, you know, it's not it's not me that's kind of hiking the prices up, uh, is all I'm saying. Um, Martin Bix is saying, I don't require, recall a Squire advert, but I used to make tea and toast during the Minder ad breaks back then. Oh, Minder, yes, there's a show. David Evans is saying, uh, what do you think of Steve Farris as a player? Uh, I was a big Mr. Mr. fan uh, back in the day, and now, oh, no, there's a blast from the past. Mr. Mr. Um, Broken Wings, that was there. Uh, so, um, or was that Cutting Crew? The two bands that I always get confused between from the 80s are Cutting Crew and Mr. Mr. And I always think that, like, what, like, like somebody will say, like, uh, Kyrie, I think, is that Mr. Mr. or Cutting Crew? I, I just died in your arms tonight. Is that Mr. Mr. or Cutting Crew? I can never remember. Um, but, um, yeah. So I can't really say I'm a, I'm a, an aficionado of Mr. Farris's work. Um, Stuart Young is saying, um, uh, where are we? Where's that gone? Uh, Jack Pearson plays Squire Strats. Not only Squire Strats, he plays, um, well, the, the discontinued now, but he plays the, um, the, the Squire Bullet Strat, uh, the, um, bottom bargain basement kind of entry level Strat, the, the, the cheapest guitar that you can buy from the Fender Stable or could do. They've been replaced by the Sonic series now. But um, uh, a student of mine uh, in the States, uh, who's also, he's, he's kind of become a, 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 a good mate, actually. Um, you know, we have a bit of an, we, 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 one of those kind of students that um, it's like, it's often a struggle to get a lesson in because we're just kind of chatting and nattering. And more than once I've said to him, yeah, I can't charge you for this week because we, we've just kind of chatted and kind of gossiped all the way through the lesson. But he he um, he met Jack Pearson once at a gig and, you know, kind of just in the bar afterwards. And he said, yeah, come on, you've you got to be doing something. Are you, are you not even upgrading the pots or, you know, kind of anything like that? No, he just plays stock um, Squire Bullet Strats. And if you don't know who Jack Pearson is, he is like, you know, he's played with everybody, you know, the Allman Brothers, loads of people, big time Nashville session guitar player. And he plays a Squire Bullet Strat. So, you know, it's all in the fingers, isn't it? Um, God O'Cannon, you got to uh, head off out to work now. Well, have a good shift, mate. And uh, we're just going to sit here and drink beer while we think about you kind of to uh, doing an honest day's toil. Um, Um, Francis Dunry plays a vintage 80 squire. He does indeed. Um, you know, it's, um, I remember that, uh, that what was it called twang bang Kerrang, that electric guitar documentary that was on in the UK, uh, back in the, uh, in the eighties and, uh, you know, quite the sort of, uh, shreddy legato player back, uh, then wasn't he? Um, uh, Deco dude is saying, what do I think about Parker guitars? Uh, not a great deal, to be honest with you. I played one um, back in the mid-90s when they were the kind of hot topic, the greatest thing, you know, and I wasn't impressed by it one little bit. Um, you know, they, they look uglier than a bulldog chewing a wasp, and apparently the reason that they look that ugly is because they've been ergonomically designed. Forget about the looks. This is all about comfort. No, it isn't. There's a big pointy bit here that <coughs> sticks into your gut. Um, you know, I just, I, I, I don't like the look of them. I don't find them um, appealing. Uh, I don't think they kind of, I don't think they're comfortable. And, you know, the sound is just essentially a bit meh, if I'm honest. Um so sorry if you've got a Parker guitar and I've just trashed your pride and joy, but um, I was asked, and uh, there it is. So uh, where are we? B Mac is saying, didn't Prince play a Tele Squire? No, he didn't. He played a Horner uh, Telecaster copy, which was um, when when Horner 
kind of realized that he was um, using one of their guitars. They rebranded it the Hornet Prinz, P-R-I-N-Z, or Z, depending which side of the Atlantic you're on. Um, and uh, I don't know if that resulted in any, any in any legal action, but I think they dropped the name uh, pretty shortly after. But Harley Benton do a copy of it, uh, you know. To be fair, uh, Prince uh, used to play that guitar uh, with, uh, I think he had EMG pickups in it. Um, so, uh, Michael Purcell is saying that the Fly was the first to use carbon fibre necks, weren't they? I don't know. Possibly, possibly. Um, and uh, let's have a, a look. Uh, let's have a look see Wilson in the chat. Um, yes, that uh, that calling all the heroes uh, song from uh, it bites. I did a uh, Francis Dunnery um, solo analysis a little while back. Um, you know, still too young to remember. Read some interviews with uh, Frank Francis Dunnery from. Um, <clears throat> oh, the, the just. Putting in there, the lamb is saying the Prince guitar is a Horner Mad Cat by its proper name. Okay. Um, uh, yes, I um, I read some interviews with Francis Dunnery recently from It Bites, and he's quite sort of um, embarrassed now about his his days when back in the eighties when he was the kind of Lagarde or Alan Holdsworth style shredder, um, and he's he, he said he's trying to kind of. Oh, I don't know when it was, maybe a couple of years ago, he said he was trying to get more more into a kind of soulful, less shreddy way of playing uh, these days. I don't know if that's the case. Um, uh, what are you saying there, Fiend Tunes? I had an absolutely wonderful Horner Les Paul copy in the, in the 1970s. Unfortunately, I broke it. I broke a lot of guitars in those days. We you quite the Pete Townsend in those days, mate? Um... Uh, let's have a look what you're saying there, uh, John Mack. Um, uh, were the Squire Stra Stratton and Argos advert, maybe? No, mate, they, they weren't. They were, um, it was a TV advertising campaign showing, I can remember it now, it was um, a guy sat playing, uh, piecing together like a little lick that he was trying to play on his newly bought Squire Strat through his little practice amp and um then the then a bit of advertising blurb showing you the guitar and kind of the price and everything i remember the price was 212 pounds uh i don't know why i remember that but i do and and then the next the, the advert closes like a little short 20 second advert or something with the same guy you know kind of uh, playing that same lick you know on on a, on a big stage you know kind of doing the kind of um, head back, feet on the monitors, kind of uh, guitar hero pose. You know, I definitely remember. It used to be in the ad breaks on on TV shows on Channel Four late at night on a weekend. Uh, so what what would I have been watching back then, late night on a weekend? Probably, I, I remember a, a show called Gas Tank, um, which was um, I think hosted by Rick Wakeman. And it was just like, it only lasted one series. And uh, Rick Wakeman and Tony Ashton um, and uh, used to host it. And they used to get musical kind of celebrities on every week. I remember there was an episode where Phil Lynott and uh, John Sykes turned up uh, when he was the new guitar player in Thin Lizzy at the time. And just jam and chat. It was kind of part musical jam session and uh, part chat kind of talk show and uh, it only lasted one series i'd kill to have that show back uh, oh chip chip young remembers gas tank uh, again another one of those shows uh shows shows excuse me tell i've had a beer um another one of those shows when um you know it was just you, you you'd kind of love to have a, a show like that back but you know i i mention it to people now and you think no i don't remember that and you think, did I imagine it? Am I the only person who remembers that? Um, 
Sean House is saying, uh, foreign films with a triangle in the corner, John. What you mean, what is often euphemistically referred to as a, as a gentleman's special interest cinematic presentation? <laughs> no, no. Um, I used to know, I used to know a bloke who could, uh, who could get me those on VHS. <laughs> um, anyway, um, Uh, let's see what else I've missed in the chat. Um, Chip Young is saying your collection is seriously lacking in P P ninety guitars. Yes, but you yes you've got a CST, but we never see it. Um, I should get that out a little bit more, shouldn't I? Uh, that CST twenty four with the P nineties, um, very very generously given to me by um, a good friend of mine called Michael, who's. Not having a good time of things at the moment. I, I really, really treasure that guitar. Um, it, it was a lovely gift from Michael, as is the um, the Nashville Telecaster back there, um, which I should play more often uh, as well. Um, the, the thing is, though, the, the situation I'm in, a large part of how I earn my living is by doing guitar reviews. Um, you know, I, I get a guitar, I try and get it for a good price. I'll make like an unboxing video with it. I'll do a review video with it. I'll do a how's it settling in video. I'll do a video comparison video with another guitar. And maybe before I do any of those, I'll also do like a let's go shopping for a guitar kind of video. So all the revenue from those videos all adds up. And that means if I get the guitar for a decent price, I can then sell it at a very keen and competitive price when I need to get rid of it and um, and make a profit. And th that's sort of partially my business model. Um, and what it means is that there's always new guitars. There's often new, or quite often there's new guitars. I buy, you know, um, a lot of new guitars every week and then move them on. So there's a big throughput. And there's always one or two that can, oh, this is nice. I'm hanging on to this. Um, so, you know, th there's always a shiny new toy in the box. And um, I do end up, and I, I apologize, I do end up neglecting some of the guitars that are, you know, kind of, um, you know, sort of the, the, the staples of what I should be, um, you know, kind of playing more often. I will make an effort um, to... Uh, to, to kind of get get some of the old stock out a little bit more often. Uh, Paul Trainer saying play one guitar a week. Um, it's an idea, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Um, what are you saying there, Rob Bolt? Um, uh, what t-shirt size would would fit Shirley Crabtree for an easy, easy, easy fit? Oh yes, we were we were WhatsApping about this this afternoon, weren't we, uh, Rob? Yes. Um, Shirley Crabtree. Now, who is Shirley Crabtree? Despite the, the name Shirley, he was a bloke, and um, he was uh, he was a wrestling star in the nineteen seventies and eighties in the UK called Big Daddy. And as I said to Rob in a WhatsApp message, it was like you know, it was like finding out that uh, Father Christmas or Santa Claus wasn't real when you realised that there was something a bit fishy about um, an obese. 60 odd year old man wearing a leotard win, winning a fight with a bloke half of his age by hitting him with his belly <laughs> yes big daddy the wrestler um gosh that was that was I, I i remember it vividly i remember that saturday afternoon wrestling on tv in the uk it was great but it was just awful at the same time wasn't it, it was just so obviously fixed um, you know, but it was good entertainment. Uh, Michael Bellivo, have you been watching uh, Airplane lately? Don't call me Shirley. Um, <laughs> what are you saying there, Robert Forsyth? I watched my first director's cut, special interest gents from the other day. In the end, the plumber fixed the sink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, 
Yes, that was always the, the that was always the setup, wasn't it? I've come to fix the washing machine, you know, or the whatever. Um, Rob Bald, uh, where are you? Um, I christened got Colin gu guitaristas as Colin Haystacks, as in giant Haystacks. Well, you know, um, yes. I hope you're not watching this, Colin. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Les Kellett. There now, there's a name. Les Kellett was a comedian wrestler, wasn't he? He always used to kind of. He was always the clown. And uh, who was the guy? It was Kendo Nagasaki? That was him. The guy who always used to kind of try and be a bit martial arts, and he always had like the kind of fencing mask on, didn't he? Um. Uh. Kendo Nagasaki says the autumn storm. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Howard Garner saying, fixed, you spoiled it for me. Sorry, mate. There is no Father Christmas or Santa Claus neither. Um, yeah, I often, I, I, I seem to end up saying this every week, don't I? That like, you know, uh, in all my videos I, at, at the end, I say, and don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. UK time. We talk about music and guitars and many other things. We're into that sort of territory now, aren't we? Many other things. Thankfully, we've only got about three minutes left. Um, uh, Michael Purcell is saying, did you ever find rental companies for music equipment? I have started noticing ads for that. Um, I have started noticing in, in um, my various feeds, like on YouTube and stuff, where there's one I've noticed where it says uh, rent a strat. So maybe somebody's listening to me. Um, you know, maybe because, you know, just, you know, but you know, in the same way you can kind of lease a car or in the old days, like lease a television from Radio Rentals or Granada, you know. So and nowadays, you know, we, we, we lease these things, don't we? You know, you pay so much a month and you can get the latest form. Um, you know, it just surprised me that um, with any desirable you know, kind of consumer product, like an expensive guitar that for, for many people is too too expensive to buy outright, that uh, it doesn't surprise me that some people are moving into that uh, realm of, okay, we can lease these things out. Um, Stevie Mack is saying, um, Kendo Nagasaki was from Norton, down your, well, Norton is down my way indeed. I didn't know he was from there though, mate. Um, GRB Aquatics is saying all the major music stores here in Australia all hire at least guitars, etc. Excellent. I just I just hope we get more of this kind of thing coming on because let's face it, you know, if a guitar picks up a few knocks and scratches and stuff, you know, people pay extra for that, don't they? You know. Um, you know, it's uh here's a guitar for five hundred quid, but if you want a few kind of dents and scratches and worn bits of paintwork, it's a thousand quid. I don't get it myself, but it is a thing. Uh, let's, as we're moving into the final minute of the stream, um, uh, let's see if there's anything else that uh, we can pick up on in, in the chat. Uh, yes, Budget Pedal Chap is saying, uh, heading over to Steve Cassidy Budget Guitar Show interview in a bit. Yes, uh, Steve has got Johnny from the Budget Guitar Show on uh, in under a minute. So if uh, if you all start filing out the door uh, to go and uh, watch the excellent Steve Cassidy, then please do so. And I'm going to head off over there myself shortly. So I'll tell you what, chaps, uh, we're less than a minute left in the allotted hour, but we'll wrap it up there. Um, Rent to Kill saying, how's Dougal doing? He's absolutely fine, mate. Thanks for asking. Uh, but that's it for this week. I'm going to swig this beer off, and then I will say... Time, oh, time, gentlemen, please. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, chaps.